In research, sampling plays a very important role. It gives the basic data for the analysis later and thus forms the basis of the findings and uh, later usage of any research. Before we get into the details of the sampling and the various types of the sampling, we will be understanding a few concepts related to sampling and this some, the understanding of these concepts would help us in understanding the various types of sampling in a better manner. You would come across the terminologies like population, sampling frame, sampling bias. So initially we will spend some time on understanding these terminologies in detail. So here we go one by one. The first terminology is population. Now in general we know the word population we have heard, we have been using that word even in our daily life. Generally we use it for the human beings and the mankind of the a particular nation or a city. In context of research, the word population is defined as the group of individuals having similar characteristics that distinguish them from the other groups. So in this definition, you can see the important terminology is the distinguishing characteristic. So there is some feature which is common in that group of population units that make them different from the other population. Let us understand this with an example. Suppose I say a population of the fifth standard boys studying in SSC board. That means the similar characteristic of all the boys in that population will be firstly they all will be boys in terms of gender. In terms of their level of studying, they all will be studying in the fifth standards and in terms of the board they follow, they all will be following the SSC board syllabus. So these are the common characteristics amongst all the boys in that population which will make them different from the boys of who are maybe not in the fifth standard or they may not be uh, studying in SSC board syllabus or maybe they are girls. So thus the population, if they have the common characteristics, common features which are applicable to all the population units in that particular population. Such a group together is termed as population. We go to the next terminology now which is census. Now just like the word population, the word census is very much familiar to all of us. In India, we know that the information about every individual is gathered every 10 years and we call it as a census in the country. So as in the census, we collect the information from every individual of the population without leaving anybody. Same meaning is applicable even in case of research. Here we define the word census as data collection in relation to all units in a population rather than in relation to a sample of units of that population. That means not a single member is left without collection of data. Another example uh, for census could be taken, suppose the data of all the employees that is with either HR department or an establishment section. They have every information uh, about every employee of the uh, maybe university or a college. No employee is left without having the information in the establishment unit. If such a data is used or if such kind of data is gathered by, from every member of the population, then it is termed as census. It has the implications in terms of finances and time because since every member is required to be touched here, the data is to be collected from every member of the population. It takes a lot of time and lot of energy as well. From here we go to the next terminology in the study of sampling that is the sampling frame. Now sampling frame is a smaller portion from the larger population. It is the actual listing. Suppose I am conducting a research in a school 
and I am interested in studying the standard four students. Then the list of all the four standard students will form the sampling frame. In terms of technical definition, it reads as the listing of all units in the population from which the sample is selected. So in this example, I, if I have the list of all the four standard students in that school, then I will be able to select my sample from that list. So in the sampling frame, I must have the list of all the members who are in that sampling frame from whom my sample will be selected. If the researcher has as much detailed information about the members of the group, it becomes easier for the researcher to select the sample from such a sampling frame. Next terminology we will see is the word actual sample. So sampling naturally is related with the word sample. So this is the, perhaps the most important terminology amongst the all. This is the actual group of people who will be used in the research. The data would be collected from them and processed. So here is a technical definition of the terminology. Sample is the group of participants in a study selected from the target population from which the researcher generalizes to the target population. So as the definition implies, it is a small group of that population. So naturally the characteristics which the population would carry, it is essential that the sample also would have those, all those characteristics. And then it will be real sample and it will be easier and more authentic to generalize on the basis of the data collected from such a sample. And that is why the sampling methods one has to take care that sample has all the characteristics of the population. The next terminology we study is the representative sample. Now here we have understood the meaning of the word sample. When we add the adjective representative to it, it adds more responsibility to the word sample. Representative as in having exactly all the uh, characteristics of the population to be followed in the sample as well. As a technical definition, it goes like the representative sample is the one that reflects the population accurately so that it is a microcosm of the population. Now in this definition, there are two important terms accurate representation and microcosm. So if the population is having, for example, uh, say 40% uh, of the boys and 60% of girls, it is essential that even in the sample, the same ratio be maintained. That means even if I collect data from a few of them, the same ratio of boys and girls, that is 4 is to 6, is maintained even in the sample. Only in that case, the sample would be actual representation of the population. And in that case, the generalizations will be more meaningful. Another terminology in this definition is the microcosm. That is the miniature of the population. So as the composition of the population would be, it will be exactly same, only it is in the miniature form. The number gets reduced, but the ratio and the representation of the minor groups in the population, they remain as they are. Only then it will make more sense in making generalization based on such sample. The next terminology is the response rate. Now this is the aspect related to the actual data collection. Though one plans to collect the data from some number of people, say 60, then whether the all 60 questionnaires are gathered or otherwise is something related to the terminology response rate. So we see the technical definition. The response rate is the percentage of a sample that agrees to participate. So here only that part of the sample is considered which gives a completely filled in data. At times the persons do not respond 
or if they respond, they may be returning you the unfilled questionnaire or the partially filled questionnaires. So all these factors affect the response rate of that questionnaire. There is a formula for finding out the response rate. The formula is number of usable questionnaires divided by the total sample minus unsuitable or uncontactable members of the sample. And this whole division is multiplied by 100 because it is a percentage we multiply by 100. Let us take an example. Imagine a situation where the questionnaire is distributed to 100 people. Out of 100 people, 20 people have not responded to the questionnaire at all. Amongst the 80 questionnaires that were gathered, all the 80 questionnaires were completely filled in. Okay, so what is the response rate for that particular questionnaire? So if we fill in these figures into the formula, it goes like number of usable questionnaires, so they were 80, divided by 100, that was the total sample, minus 20, the number of people who did not respond. So into 100, so it becomes 80 by 80 into 100, so the answer is 100. So in this uh, example, the response rate is 100%, which is the best situation. But we may not come across such situation always. Let us take another example where the same questionnaire was distributed in a group of 100 people and all the people responded to the questionnaire. So there was no dropout uh, in terms of returning the questionnaire. When the data was checked for the completeness, it was checked whether all the uh, members have responded to all the questions in the questionnaire, it was found that only 80 questionnaires were completely filled in. So what is the response rate in this case? So if we fill in these figures in the formula, it will go like 80, that is the number of completely filled in questionnaires divided by 100 total sample minus number of persons who did not return the questionnaire which is 0 in this case. So it will go like 80 by 100 into 100. So the answer will be 80. So in this case the response rate for this questionnaire was only 80 percent. So here we can see the difference between the two examples where the same questionnaire was distributed and maybe the completely filled in questionnaire uh, that number was same in both the cases 80 but the response rate differed when the number of people who dropped out from the survey that changed so the ultimately the response rate also changed why this terminology is related to the concept of sampling because it is not only important that the sample size is sufficiently big enough but it is also crucial that the data collected from that sample is complete. It is also important that the data collected from that sample is complete in all aspects and hence can be used further for the analysis. We have seen a few terminologies past few minutes. Here is the diagram which depicts the relationship between many of the terminologies. As you can see in the diagram, the outermost circle is that of the population. Because we say population is that whole large group from which the sample is drawn. You can see that there is an arrow shown from the population to the as census. We say that the, if the data collected from every member of the population, then it is termed as census no person from the population is omitted from collection of data. From the bigger circle of population, we come to the inner smaller circle of sampling frame. Now we say that in the uh, sampling frame, one must know the names and other details of all the members of the population or in that sampling frame. So this is a small sampling frame as compared to the population. 
in a population many such sampling frames are possible because there would be many other members of the population whose lists may not be available but such lists can be prepared if uh, data is to be collected from them or any other research to be conducted with them. So this sampling frame forms a smaller portion of the population. Now from there further inner circle is the circle of sample. So the sample is another again a smaller group from the sampling frame who is actually using the research. The data is actually collected from these members of the sample. We also saw that this sample is the representative sample of the population. That means it consists of all the characteristics of the population. All the constitution of population is exactly maintained when sample is selected. So the responsibility actually does not end even after selection of sample. From the sample though we have selected the person in the sample the person may or may not be interested in participating in our research. So the person may or may not return our say questionnaire or a rating scale. In that case the other terminology comes is the response rate or we also term it as a data generating sample. So this is once again a smaller portion of the sample which actually returns the processable data who actually return the completely filled in uh, instruments to the researcher. Whenever the sample and this data generating sample they match to the more and more extent it is the best situation for any research. That means there are no dropouts and the data is completely usable and the data generating sample is also becomes the exact representation of that of the population. In this case the generalizations that are made about the population are valid and applicable for the population in reality. So thus in this section we have seen the many terminologies that are related to the process of sampling. These terminologies will come again and again when we will be talking about the various sampling methods. It will be easier for one to understand those sampling methods if these basic terminologies are clear.